Hi, it's Ken McNamara from KRE Race Engines. On this episode of Crimsafe Talking Tech, we're going to do an insight on engine dynos on how they work in a uh, racing team. So this is the, uh, the dyno console where we do all the testing for the engines. Um, we have all the uh, Motec software, which is the new M1 stuff for the cough car from last year. Um, and then the Superflow software, which is all our dyno um, information. So we get like a power curve for the engine, oil pressure, torque curve, um, which we work in, in conjunction with the Motec as we change the tuning on the motor when we're looking for those small increments of power. In a V8 supercar these days, it's more, you know, one, two, and three horsepower because the rules are that tight, it's very difficult to make any big gains anymore. So when the engine's on the dyno, obviously it's all running, it's quite noisy in the room. But we can measure all through the, uh, the Motec dash, all our fuel economy, things like that. So it helps with the data from the dyno software, we can sort of get a good information on what we're trying to achieve with the motor, um, you know, with the testing that we want to do, but it's just straight mapping or R&D purposes. So you can see on that, that dyno run there, that's one of the engines that ran in uh, Ran in Perth. Yeah, the overlay is quite close. Um, the blow by number's slightly higher. The motor's done a few races, so it'll um, it'll be stripped after the test day and then uh, be rebuilt, probably ready for sand down or or one of those races later in the year. But that gives us a good comparison. If we we see the curve drop off, we can tell where we're down on power, um, and we can normally see by blow by and vacuum that'll. Uh, we know if the engine's not up to, not up to scratch, we'll, we won't run it. Um, but it allows like for the races like Bathurst and stuff where, like today, the weather's quite good this time of year in winter, so the engines make good power. Where somewhere Bathurst at 93 kPa, the engine's probably making 50, 60 less horsepower, so it's not as hard on the engine as, say, somewhere like Sandown where it's near sea level. Still got long straightaways, but good weather conditions where the engine's probably making more power, so it's a little bit harder on itself. But, but here, that gives us all the information here to know whether the engines are, you know, repeatable. If it's had dirt through the airbox, we can tell by, by blow-by and stuff like that. We can see all that, especially from Perth where there's a lot of sand. You get all those uh, engines tend to give it more war at racing at tracks like that. Okay, we've just finished dyno in that uh, 14 sprint car engine. The data we have on here, we only have lambda, fuel pressure, oil pressure, the basics um, on this dyno software, which we don't have that luxury of the Motec software like the V8 supercars have. So we can get all the information from there. Have a look at the power curve. You can see there, like that motor makes 700 foot-pounds of torque and 880 horsepower. So having peak torque back here at 5600, that's about where they try and run off the corner. And then they'll run right through until 88, 9000 RPM. Even though peak power's at 7200, with a direct drive race car, that's just where they'll end up with racetrack and qualifying. They'll, they'll use that in, most of the power from that engine. And as the track slickens off during the night, they'll go back to, you know, part throttle where they'll probably drop two or three hundred horsepower just to, you know, run good in a future race. In the dyno rooms, normally start of the year around January, February, getting ready for Adelaide and Clipsal, and also you know, lead up to Bathurst. You know, we'll be extremely busy. So all the motors come back, new components, especially for Bathurst and endurance races. Um, we'll probably run three motors a day on the dyno just to get all the spares and all the stuff for all the teams because they all have fresh engines. And then um, yeah, it'll be on dyno service next motor. They all come in on on trolleys, so we can just wheel them in and out, disconnect everything. And yeah, and plus you get a good consistency with the engines because they're all dyno within a day or two, so you'd know that the power numbers are nice and, nice and accurate. Buying security screens? 
Most CrimSafe lookalikes can pop out in just a few seconds, but the real CrimSafe doesn't, thanks to its patented screw clamp. Cheap lookalikes can pop out because they're only held in with a piece of plastic. But CrimSafe screw clamp locks the mesh and spreads the impact. CrimSafe resists attack and corrosion and now has the ultimate warranty, 15 years. Ask for a demonstration today, because if it's not CrimSafe, it's not CrimSafe.